Hi, boys and girls. Um, this is Brinley Decker and your teacher, Mrs. Decker, and we are here to read you a story today. Um, it's a book that we've kind of been into for a couple weeks now. We've watched the movies and we've made up our own adventures. It is the story of Jumanji. Jumanji. If you haven't seen the movies of Jumanji, I highly recommend them. They're very exciting and full of adventure. Brinley was saying that word earlier, that they were very adventurous. Um, it's about a boy and a girl who play a board game that comes to life and causes all kinds of craziness. So we are going to read the story of Jumanji today. Okay. I will start us off. Oh, no. You want to start and read the first page? Yes. Okay. Brinley's going to read us the first page, and here's the picture. Okay. Now remember, Mother said, your father and I are bringing some guests by after the opera, so please keep the house neat. Quite so, added Father, tucking a scarf inside his coat. Mother peered into the hall mirror and carefully pinned her hat in place, then knelt and kissed both children goodbye. When the front door closed, Judy and Peter giggled with delight. They took all the toys out of their toy chest and made a terrible mess. I mean mess. But their laughter slowly turned to silence till finally Peter slouched into a chair. You know what, he said. I'm really bored. Me too, sighed Judy. Why don't we go outside and play? You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of the cat in the hat story. When the boy and the girl at the beginning of the story are bored because it's raining outside and they can't go out to play, so they're just sitting there and they don't know what to do. And then all kinds of mischievous things happen, right? Yeah, it does. Peter agreed, so they set off across the street to the park. It was cold for November. The children could see their breath like steam. They rolled in the leaves, and when Judy tried to stuff some leaves down Peter's sweater, he jumped up and ran behind a tree. When his sister caught up with him, he was kneeling at the foot of the tree, looking at a long, thin box. What is that? Judy asked. It's a game, said Peter, handing her the box. Jumanji, Judy read from the box, a jungle adventure game. Look, said Peter, pointing to a note taped to the bottom of the box. In a childlike handwriting were the words, free game, fun for some, but not for all. P.S. Read instructions carefully. Want to take it home, Judy asked. Not really, said Peter. I'm sure somebody left it here because it's so boring. Oh, come on, protested Judy. Let's give it a try. Race you home. And off she ran with Peter at her heels. Turn to the next page. Okay. At home, the children spread the game out on a card table. It looked very much like the games they already had. There was a board that unfolded, revealing a path of colored squares. The squares had messages written on them. The path started in the deepest jungle and ended up in Jumanji, a city of golden buildings and towers. Peter began to shake the dice and play with the other pieces that were in the box. Put those down and listen, said Judy. I'm going to read the instructions. Jumanji, a young people's jungle adventure especially designed for the board and restless. A. Player selects pieces, I mean piece, and places it in deepest jungle. B. Player rolls dice and moves piece along path through the dangers of the jungle. C. First player to reach Jumanji and yell the city's name aloud is the winner. Is that all? asked Peter, sounding disappointed. No, said Judy. There's more than one, there's one more thing. And this is in the capital letters. D. Very important. Once the game of Jumanji is started, it will not be over until one player reaches the Golden City. That's a lot of rules. So basically, let me get this straight. They just have to move the pieces through the jungle board game, and when they get the end, they yell, Jumanji, right? Yes. But they cannot yes. quit the game. They have to finish it. No, they don't yell Jumanji. That's in the other games. Oh, okay. Oh, big deal, said Peter, who gave a board yawn. He, oh, my goodness. Check out that picture. Okay, I got to see what's happening. Here, said Judy, handing her brother the dice. You go first. Peter casually dropped the dice from his hand. Seven, said Judy. Peter moved his piece to the seventh square. Lion attacks. Move back two spaces, read Judy. Go.
gosh, how exciting, said Peter in a very unexcited voice. As he reached for his piece, he looked up at his sister. She had a look of absolute horror on her face. Peter, she whispered, turn around very, very slowly. The boy turned in his chair. He couldn't believe his eyes. Lying on the piano was a lion staring at Peter and licking his lips. You know what that means. What do you think? Um, why do you think the lion is licking his lips? Oh, oh, pick me. Well, Mom. I think he's going to try to eat him. Mm-hmm. You want to read this page? Yeah. Oh, don't eat that. <laughs> the lion roared so loud it knocked Peter right off his chair. The big cat jumped to the floor. Peter was up on his feet, running through the house with the lion a whisker's length behind. He ran upstairs and dived under a bed. The lion tried to squeeze under, but got his head stuck. Peter scrambled out, ran from the bedroom, and slammed the door behind him. He stood in the hall with Judy gasping for breath. I don't think, said Peter in between gasps of air, that I want to play this game anymore. But we have to, said Judy, as she helped Peter back downstairs. I'm sure that's what the instructions mean. The lion won't go away until one of us wins the game. Oh, my goodness. If a lion's coming already, I wonder what other crazy things are going to come out of the game. Check out this picture. <gasps> Monkeys. monkeys. And those don't look like don't look like the cute little monkeys you see sometimes. Those kind of look like mean monkeys. Peter stood next to the card table. Can't we just call the zoo and have him taken away? From upstairs came the sounds of growling and clawing at the bedroom door. Or maybe we could wait till father comes home. No one would come from the zoo because they wouldn't believe us, said Judy. And you know how upset mother would be if there was a lion in her bedroom? We started this game, and now we have to finish it. Peter looked down at the game board. What if Judy rolled a seven? Then there would be two lions. For an instant, Peter thought he was going to cry. Then he sat firmly in his chair, and he said, Let's play. Judy picked up the dice, rolled an eight, and moved her piece. Monkeys steal food. Miss one turn, she read. From the kitchen came the sounds of banging pots and falling jars, the children ran in to see a dozen monkeys tearing the room apart. Oh, I would be mad if that happened in our house. What is it? If the monkeys are tearing up our kitchen. What sound mm. does a Ooh. monkey make? Can you tell them? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to read this page? Yeah. Okay. Oh, boy, said Peter. This would upset Mother even more than the lion. Quick, said Judy, back to the game. Peter took his turn. Thank heavens he landed on a blank space. He rolled again. Moons, monsoon. monsoon. Season begins. Lose one turn. Little raindrops began to fall in the living room. Then a roll of thunder shook the walls and scared the monkeys out of the kitchen. The rain began to fall in buckets as Judy took. That's what a monsoon is. A monsoon is like a really, really heavy rainfall in a storm. Guide gets lost. Lose one turn. The rain suddenly stopped. The children turned to see a man hunched over a map. Oh dear, I say, a spot of bad luck now, he mumbled. Perhaps a left turn here, then no, 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 no. A right turn here. Yes, absolutely, I think a right turn. Or maybe, <gasps> excuse me, said Judy, but the guy just ignored her. Around here, then over here, no, no, over here, and around this, yes, yes, good. But then, hmm, Judy just shrugged her shoulders and handed the dice to Peter. Hold on. Oh my goodness. <gasps> what kind of animal is that? What do you think? In the house. <laughs> Four, five, six, he counted. Bitten by such fly. Teetsy fly. Teetsy fly. <laughs> Contract sleeping sickness. Lose one turn. Judy, Judy, 
heard a faint buzzing noise and watched a small insect land on Peter's nose. Peter lifted his hand to brush the bug away, but then stopped, gave a tremendous yawn, and fell sound asleep, his head on the table. Peter, Peter, wake up, cried Judy, but it was no use. She grabbed the dice and moved to a blank. She whirled again and waited in amazement. Rhinoceros stampede go back to his spaces. At fast as, as fast as he had fallen asleep, Peter awoke. Together, they listened to a rumble in the hallway. It grew louder and louder. Suddenly, a herd of rhinos charged right through the living room and into the dining room, crushing all the furniture in their path. Peter and Judy covered their ears as sounds of splintering wood and breaking china filled the house. Peter gave the dice a quick tumble. Oh, Python sneaks into camp. Go back one space. Judy shrieked and jumped up on the chair. I think that's about the time I would be running out of there. <laughs> Over the fireplace, said Peter. Judy sat down again, nervously eyeing the eight-foot-long snake that was wrapping itself around the mantel clock. The guide looked up from his map, took one look at the snake, and moved to the far corner of the room, joining the monkeys on the couch. <laughs> Uh-oh. You want me to do it? No. Okay. Judy took her turn and landed on a blank space. Her brother took the dice and rolled a three. Oh, no, he moaned. Volcano erupts. Go back three spaces. The room became warm and started to shake a little. Molten lava poured from the fireplace opening. It hit the water on the floor and the room filled with steam. Judy rolled the dice and moved ahead. Discover shortcut. Roll again. Oh, dear, she cried. Judy saw the snake unwrapping itself from the clock. If you roll a 12, you can get out of the jungle, said Peter. Please, please, Judy begged as she shook the dice. The snake was wiggling its way to the floor. She dropped the dice from her hand. One six, then another. Judy grabbed her piece and slammed it to the board. Jumanji! She yelled as loud as she could. <sighs> The steam in the room became thicker and thicker. Judy could not even see Peter across the table. Then, as if all the doors and windows had been opened, a cool breeze cleared the steam from the room. Everything was just as it had been before the game. No monkeys, no guide, no water, no broken furniture, no snake, no lion roaring upstairs, no rhinos. Without saying a word to each other, Peter and Judy threw the game into its box. They bolted out of the door, ran across the street to the park, and dropped the game under a tree. Back home, they quickly put all their toys away, but both children were too excited to sit quietly, so Peter took out a picture puzzle. As they fit the pieces together, their excitement slowly turned to relief, and then they were exhausted. With the puzzle half done, Peter and Judy fell sound asleep on the sofa. I wonder if when they wake up, they'll think it's all like some kind of a dream. Maybe. Wake up, dears, mother's voice called. Judy opened her eyes. Mother and father had returned and their guests were arriving. Judy gave Peter a nudge to wake him. Yawning and stretching, they got to their feet. Mother introduced them to some of the guests, then asked, Did you have an exciting afternoon? Oh, yes, said Peter. We had a flood, a stampede, a volcano. I got sleeping sickness, and Peter was interrupted by the adults' laughter. Well, said Mother, I think you both got sleeping sickness. Why don't you go upstairs and put your pajamas on? Then you can finish your puzzle and have some dinner. They didn't believe him, did they? Mm. Nope. Mm -hmm. When Peter and Judy came back downstairs, they found that Father had moved the puzzle into the den. While the children were working on it, one of the guests, Mrs. Budwing, brought home them a tray of food. Such a hard puzzle, she said to the children. Daniel and Walter are always starting puzzles and never finishing them. Daniel and Walter were Mrs. Budwing's son. They never read instructions either. Oh well, said Mrs. Budwing, turning to rejoin the guests. I guess they'll learn. Both children answered, I hope so. But they weren't looking at Mrs. Budwing. They were looking out of the window. Two boys were running through the park. They were Danny and Walter Budwing, and Danny had a long, thin box under his arm. <gasps> we hope you guys loved this story as much as we did, and I hope you will go and play a really fun board game with your families.
Have a great day. Bye.